Hi, it's good to see you again. Welcome to Biblios, the space where we think about biblical thinking. Today we're going to be talking specifically about the Bible. Patrick, welcome again. Um, Thank you. This section is um, more of a personal one. You're a pastor. You're also a pastor who looks after pastors. What we wanted to, to really just ask you is, how has the Bible influenced your life? Well, that's a huge question. Well, I, you know, it's, it's always been a part of my life, if, if I want to put it that way. I grew up um, in a home where my mother was a Christian, a mm. believer in God. Uh, my father wasn't. From a young age, uh, my mother would gather us children around, take time to read the Bible and pray. Mm -hmm. So she was basically teaching us some spiritual disciplines right from the word go. And she would be taking us to church and we'd be socializing and everything else that went on at church. So from a young age, the Bible has always been a part of my life. Mm. Reading the Bible has always been natural in that sense. I came to the place where I felt, yeah, actually what it says, I think I believe. I believe that there is a God. Mm -hmm. I believe that this God is good and that he wants the best for me. Mm -hmm. And once I came to that realization, if you like, it took an evil, even more central place uh, mm -hmm. for me. So I would dedicate quite a bit of time to read it. Yeah, it's been quite a journey, actually. And I just keep reading through it all the time. And each time you read through it, you see different things and you're learning new things. Uh, from what the Bible's saying, but also about your own life and about God and your picture of God gets bigger and bigger. So that really has been, you know, in a nutshell, that that's what's been going on for me. So then in that sense, I mean, one of the questions which comes to me maybe, what is it about this book that makes you believe it's God's Word? Mm. You know, um, it says it is. For th yeah. I mean, that, that's why, I mean, it says it there for itself. <laughs> uh, this is God's Word. But also, it's because of uh, my own experiences with it. There are all kinds of different promises in the Bible. Okay. And I found when I, when I take in those promises and I have prayed to this God that I believe exists, certain things happen. They have a profound influence on, on who you are. Mm -hmm. For example, one of them, I remember uh, learning about God created us as stewards of everything that we have. Yeah. So, so we're not really owners of this earth, we're stewards. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's put us in charge of what's here. And one of the ways in which he tries to help remind us of this, this is to say, okay, return one tenth of what you earn to me. Yeah. And that, that, that can, you know. The tithe. <laughs> exactly, that's yeah. tithing. And that, that can seem pretty stiff and you think, well, mathematically that doesn't make sense. Nine tenths would be more than keeping all ten tenths for yourself. Uh, you know, mm. the, how, how's that going to stretch? But each time I've kind of needed extra help, it's been there. Remember one time I was when I was studying, actually, doing theology, and you have to pay a certain amount of fees. I know yeah, you guys yeah, know yeah. all about that. <laughs> and this one, one year, it looked like I was going to be quite a bit short. And I was thinking, how am I, I, I was working as much as I could. I couldn't, could, mm -hmm. and I'm praying, God, you've got to help me with this. Just before the deadline, when I had to hand this money in, I got a check in the post for that exact same amount that was tax that I had uh, owing Everybody? back to me, oh, wow. and it came at just the right time. And I'm thinking, wow, what a coincidence! Yeah. <laughs> but a lot of these coincidences happen when you are praying to God and say, "But you said that if I return this to you, you would help," and this is what happened. So then, has there ever been a time where you've claimed a promise and He hasn't helped? I guess there are, there are uh, and it depends on what it is that I, I've been claiming. I, you know, I've been. Um, I may have asked for healing for people. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen. That's often been the big one uh, for me. And that leaves me somewhat frustrated and I think, okay, why not? Well, that's exactly what I was going to ask because I mean, in some ways, if it happens sometimes and doesn't happen other times, which one's the reality? Yes, exactly. And uh, I've had to struggle with that as well. And sometimes I find texts, you know, where God says, well, it's because of this. It kind of boils down to the fact that God's not Father Christmas. So mm -hmm. you just go there with your wish list and you ask for stuff and please give me and if you don't give it to me, I won't believe in you kind of thing. If he is really the sovereign God, it's more about my will being aligned with his rather than his will <laughs> being aligned with mm -hmm. mine. So I've kind of come to the place where I can say, okay, you know better than I do in this situation. So, so that may be the case. You know, 
One of the stories that, that really impressed me was one where Jesus has three friends, their siblings, Mary, Martha and, and Lazarus. Apparently he would go there for meals and you know, they, they, were good, they were good friends. And Lazarus falls sick and the sisters send a message to Jesus and say, the one you love, you know, he's sick. Yeah. And when Jesus hears this, he doesn't rush there straight yeah, away and heal right. the guy. Yeah. He waits until he dies. Mm. He's dead for what, four days. Of course, both sisters, when they see him, the first thing they say is, if you'd been here, he wouldn't have died. Yeah. But then he makes this point, you know, I am the resurrection. For me, the, the, one of the things I learned was sometimes you ask for healing and what you'll get is a resurrection. And for some people, that's what it's going to be. Because they didn't get the answer to the prayer. They were asking for a healing and mm -hmm. they didn't get it. They got a resurrection instead. And yeah, I know that's tough, but sometimes that may be the answer. I think, you know, what you're saying is, 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 is really interesting. You know, different people might have different ideas as to how the Bible ought to shape life. Um, mm. It may be that, that some people feel that, you know, you ought to sort of open it and then the answer is sort of right there. Mm -hmm. And um, from what you've shared, sometimes you will open it and maybe the answer isn't quite what we, we, we thought it might be. And I suppose the Bible is full of stories and illustrations of many different um, life experiences and circumstances. And so I suppose if maybe something is, 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 is going on for you, uh, maybe th there is somebody um, who you know is, is unwell, how do you go about choosing which text to look at um, hmm. to, to sort of match with your, yeah, your life experience at the time? Because there's so many. <laughs> yes, indeed, indeed. I think overall what the Bible is trying to tell us is that there is a God who is good. Get to know him. That really is the basis. Mm -hmm. we, we, we can open it up and try to look at texts and say, well, you healed them. Why aren't you healing me? You know, you gave this guy lots of money. Why don't you give it to me? Mm -hmm. uh, and that kind of, but, but that may not necessarily be the case. The bottom line is there actually is a God and he is good. And so you ask, okay, but what about all the bad? If you can have the, like, this bird's eye view of what's going on in the Bible, God created everything well. It went very wrong. And he has this plan of how to fix it. And that plan involved him coming in the form of Jesus and, and dying. But also now we're in a phase, if you like, where he's trying to keep saying to people, I am still good. An mm -hmm. enemy has said, I'm not so good, but I am good. And you will find that in your experience. So even though I may be looking for specific text for, for where I'm at, I've got to keep it within that general framework of, do I still trust God? Do I still think he's good? Because um, mm. if he's not, forget it. Uh, but I, I think that's what still shines through. And as I get older, that I think that's what, that's what I'm learning more. He is a God, as he describes himself. He says, I'm loving, I'm gracious, long-suffering, generous, mm. and he is that. And he's just as well. And that for me is, sure. is, is, is the basis. So would it be fair to say that as you've, you know, you grew up reading the Bible, as a pastor you continue to, to do so as you prepare your sermons. And, and so I'm wondering, would it be fair to say that, you know, as you've read the Bible, that's served to increase your trust in, in God? Um, yes, yes. I, I think that's been it. And, and I've grown. Uh, you know, because if you think we develop yeah. uh, as human beings, you, you start off with a kind of childlike faith and, mm -hmm. you know, it's black and white and it says it there, so I must have it kind of thing. And God leads you through that to, to mature more and more. And, mm -hmm. and as you grow, I think you realize, OK, maybe I've got to look at the context. What was it saying there mm -hmm. uh, before trying to apply it to me now? You learn those ways of, of reading the Bible and uh, that kind of helps give you the perspective you need for, OK, what can I take from it for yeah. today. I guess to come at it from a slightly different angle as well though, um, you mentioned that you basically grew up reading the Bible. Um, it was something that you started doing, what well, your mom started doing with mm. you. What about a person who didn't grow up reading the Bible? Is it just a case that if they pick it up, they too will come to understand like you and, and, and come to believe in God? Like, how do you move, or is it even possible to move from, I don't really think God exists, so I'm going to read the Bible and all of a sudden I do? Mm. I think you can have that. Uh, you know, somebody on their own sitting and mm -hmm. something happened. But the best way is really to have somebody helping you, mentoring you. As I said, my mom started that with me when I was younger. And then in the church environment I was at, we had people that helped us as well. Because mm -hmm. you'll have lots of questions. You start reading this, you'll have lots of questions. Yeah. And you're trying to think, why on earth is that there? Or that doesn't make sense. And how could God be doing that? So you need some guidance. So I would say anybody who's looking to get to know what's there, yes, get yourself a Bible, but see if you can find some some people who perhaps you you 
trust who you see you know in their lives they seem to to have it going on mm -hmm. and then bounce some ideas off them and, and get some guidance from other people because mm -hmm. we all need that yeah. yes you may have the person that comes to god on their own by opening the bible but generally it's through somebody else yeah. helping yeah. you as well and i guess just another thing to kind of follow on from that then in terms of reading the bible like you've been reading it for years if it was since childhood are you reading it so you've kind of finally read all of it like why keep rereading it and going over the same things over and over yes. again i think it's because each time i read through the bible i get new insights into stuff all the time one of the premises i take in going to the bible is that it is god's word so god mm. speaking to to us and it describes itself as special it's inspired it, it has god's thoughts in it mm. and when you expose yourself to this something's going to happen in you so the word is kind of active and living etc so if you take those kind of premises to what you're reading each time you go to it something dynamic will be happening because you're always in a different place yourself yeah. you're seeing things from a different angle and so you will see things in a text that you've never seen before you know i preach from some texts several times and very different sermons the context that you're, you're trying to relate it to is very different to what it was before etc and i think that's part of why it's so good because it's it it's constantly you grow in it i mm. think uh, you can never totally exhaust it one final uh, question to to ask you i pick up the bible i read genesis you know eventually i start coming across you know, <laughs> a lot those, of names. Those, those, those lists of names, the genealogies and, and yes. so on. And so, you know, uh, th there may be some for whom reading the Bible is not <laughs> mm, <laughs> the, 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 the easiest um, yes. um, thing to do. And, you know, I'm wondering from your experience, is there anything you might have to say to or advice? Yes, or yes. Or I generally tell people the Bible is, is, is a mixture of different types of literature. So you've got historical mm. parts, you've got poetic parts, you've got even some prophetic parts. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like talking about end time things and, and stuff like that. And so you've got to understand that there are different parts, different genres, if you like, within it. So what, what I say to people is, listen, start with the first book, Genesis. It kind of gives you the, 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 the background to how stuff started, mm -hmm. in a sense. Then I would because it, you'll, you'll quickly see how the, the, the history goes. Go to the second half of the Bible, the New Testament, and have a look at Jesus. Because we, we can get lost in what God really is like, but he really kind of shows you. And the easiest book to read, perhaps, because there's like four of them, is the book of Mark. Uh, and he'll give you a nice general overview of what Jesus is like, and, and you start looking at that. And then maybe you can, you can go back and, and try to fill in the story as, as you go along. But that, that would be how I do it. That's what I yeah. said to people. Start with the, how it all started and how it all went wrong and what God was trying to do. And then look at the solution in Jesus. Uh, and, and then you can work your way through some of the other bits. Oh, Patrick, thank you very much for, for joining us thank today. You for having me. Thank you for joining us on Biblios. It was great to have you. If you join in the conversation, you can talk more about your own experiences with the Bible and what you thought about what Patrick had to share as well. For last week's video, it's over there, so you can check that out too. And hopefully we'll see you next time.